Welcome back to the channel, Pokemaniacs. Pokemon Day brought us some crazy news, but we're going to be jumping into some collectibles, as we always do. Coming out this month, we've got new figures from Takara Tomy. We're going to be talking a lot about them this week. This is the Diorama Collect Steel and Psychic Collection. These little figures of Varum, Bronzor, Meltan on the Steel side, and then on the Psychic side, we've got Mew, Ralts, and Espeon. You can put them in these little pedestals, and then you can like connect them up. Like, I don't know, kind of fun. Remind me of like uh, Amiibos or the gallery figures that Pokemon Center did a while back. Either way, solid collection of Pokemon. So if I'm able to find a link to these, I'll put it down below. But uh, so far, I haven't been able to. But that Mew and Espeon are like, they're on my list. Takara Tomy also has new additions to their Kimi Ni Kometa line of plushies. This wave is bringing us three new plushies featuring Fido, Tandemouse, and Claude Sire. And these typically don't make it out of the US. They usually are just a Japanese thing. And generally they feature kind of like a, I'm gonna call it furry texture to uh, the plushie, which looks kind of cool. And like, honestly, the plushies look super soft. And like, that's I think probably like the major selling point there. Takara Tomy also bringing us more Mon Call figures. We've got uh, this coming up in April, coincidentally for 420. We've got Flora Gato, which I don't know why this one's coming up early. I just think the release time is very funny. But uh, following that, in June, we're getting Cyndaquil, Quaxwell, and Crocolore. I don't, so, so again, I don't know why they broke up the trio. It seems a little sus. And then coming out on March 9th, we've got at Pokemon Center, we've got these Ogre Pond plushies. It's a whole wave collection of Ogre Pond plushies, each one featuring one of its different masks or different forms. It looks like they just hold the mask, though. I don't think they're actually the way for them to like put it on, which... I mean, you can kind of go either way on that, I think, but super cute plushies. And these plushies look like, just based on the promotional materials, they usually do come out on the English side. So I'll still link it down below for you if you want to import it, but just like a heads up, like probably will come out in English. And then the Pokemon Center in Tokyo Bay has got a whole facelift. Apparently this was a Pokemon Center that needed uh, some more theming, uh, some upgrades to the Pokemon Center. I've never been, so I can't really speak to that. But we do have these new images of all of the upgrades that are coming, so there are going to be more little stations for you to do things with the TCG, just interact in general. And with this new redesign, there is going to be a very strong theming around Ampharos and Meryl. When the new Pokemon Center opens up on April 12th, there will be a whole event, there's going to be mascots there and all that, and anybody who does go there and spend 3,000 yen will get a free card file thing here. I have it up on the screen. In addition to all of that, because we're here to talk about collectibles, uh, there's going to be a whole new collection featuring some plushies, there's keychains, a bag, and then I, what I think is like a roll-up blanket so you can like roll it up and like do a picnic or something somewhere. Really cute line though, and I, like I love that the store's opening up and it gets its own collection, that's super cool. So maybe, I don't know if you have a trip over to Japan here anytime soon, but if you, if you do, you might want to sw swing by that store and go pick up some things. Or if you prefer, I mentioned this in the last video, but I do have my own merch shop now. So far, it's mainly just like past logos of some of the Pokemon card sets, so this way we can get some stickers, put them on our binders, but I am starting to design more original things so we can get like t-shirts, or if you want to put it on like a hat or something like that, I have that available, so I'll, I'll link the shop down below. Feel free to go check it out, and if you have any suggestions on designs or things you would like to see, let me know. We'll see if we uh, can make that happen for you. Now, I may be a little bit late to the party on the Pokemon Day news recaps, but uh, thought I'd still share my two cents on them. The week was like super busy. I was planning on doing something like day of, didn't work out. The day after, it just, so sorry. This TCG Pocket game was announced, being developed by DNA, which also runs Pokemon Masters EX. Sounds super interesting. Like, with the immersive cards like that, I, mean, I think we're gonna get lost in that for quite some time. I think that was a beautiful, wonderful idea that they did that. But the gameplay is what intrigues me because we already have the Pokemon trading card game live on mobile. So it's kind of interesting to have like a whole separate game that you can go play on, trade cards, like all this stuff. But uh, I was reading this article and then it turns out, I looked at the top, I was like, oh my God, it's Poke Beach. But uh, Poke Beach put out this article talking about like how like Marvel Snap uh, Pokemon, not Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, they offer like a like diet version of the larger card games that are maybe out there. And also, like, I love Marvel Snap because it's super simple. You build a small deck, you just go throw down for a few minutes, boom, I played a whole match. Strategy, great. So if we can bring that into a Pokemon trading card game, I see that as a win. 
Now, we don't really have like all of the details on the app, but I'm very interested because I think there's a lot of lift that comes to the Pokemon TCG where you're like designing a deck, you're getting the cards, like, and then to go play a match, that's also in time investment. So if you can have those just like quick snappy little matches with each other, like that's, I think that's a really good thing to have on mobile. I don't know, time will tell. And then the big announcement, uh, you know, not a lot of people I think were anticipating, but Pokemon Legends ZA, I'm also disappointed that there's not enough like ZA memes out there, like pizza, especially with like PLZA, like it almost looks like pizza. Anyways, the, tra the trailer starts off with talking about like a redesign, a restructure of Lumio City. And so this is very interesting because like there's a lot of like architecture themes to what's going on in the trailer. So I think a lot of people have the impression that it may be city building. I'm also wondering because Legends kind of usually, well, usually we have one game, uh, talks about being in the past. So I wonder if there's going to be some sort of like past future jumping thing because if we're rebuilding the city, like was there, was it destroyed and we need to rebuild it into what we know from X and Y? Or did something happen since X and Y and we need to like build it up for the future? I don't know. I kind of like the idea of having some like city building aspects to it. Kind of like reminds me of uh, other games, I immediately think of like Assassin's Creed, like Brotherhood, but just being able to uh, invest into like shops, build up different things. But I also wonder, like, since it's all in Lumio City, like we have these five sections that are like major circles, but I also wonder like, are do wild Pokemon just live in the city? Is that where we're catching Pokemon? Or are we like defending the city? Or maybe there's like an underground or a sky, I don't know. Where are the wild Pokemon? But we do see in the trailer, there's battles in the streets, there's Pokemon hanging out in like little coffee shops. But we also see wild Pokemon, I think they're wild Pokemon, flying around, they're in the water. So, I don't know. We don't have enough details. All we have is this like really hype trailer coming out. Plus the overanalyzing of the logo with like Z, assuming that's Zygarde, but then we've got ZA going Z to A. You know, like normally we say like A to Z. Plus in the logo, the little dash thing has got red and blue on it, which could be uh, Xerneas and Evetal. We've got the character AZ. I don't know, man. The possibilities are endless at this point, but stoked over the next few months to get more information. And then it said next year, so I'm guessing maybe it could be a January release. I don't know. We've seen it in the past with uh, BDSP, so we'll see. Anyways, release dates that we do know, Pokemon Horizons comes out on March 7th. That's this week. It's going to be on Netflix for you US viewers. Some other regions already have access to some of these episodes, but I'm stoked for it. The things that I've seen look really cool. We've got great art direction on it. I believe they brought back the guy that uh, was on XY. I loved XY, which now that I say that out loud, is that a conspiracy? Should, should we have known the whole time that Kalos was coming? But I'm stoked to see a whole new cast of characters take the lead on this show. Like, I don't know. I think it's gonna be really fun. And to celebrate Pokemon Day last week, the Empire State Building lit up in special colors for Pokemon, which apparently is a thing. I didn't know the Empire State Building did that. I'm on the West Coast, so like I'm ignorant of all the things on the East Coast. But I think that's really cool. And it'd be really cool if you haven't already, go light up that subscribe button, hit that like button also. If you didn't like the video, make sure hit the dislike button twice, really prove your point. And I finally got my Pokemon cards that I ordered a while back. So we're gonna be opening up some cards on the channel here real soon. Take care of each other out there, and I'll see you very soon on the next one.